Hey guys, welcome back to Start Manga, where I teach you everything you need to know about how to draw like a manga artist. I'm your host Spencer, and today we're going to look at 5 essential tips and tricks in Clip Studio Paint to help you work like a true pro. With these tips, you'll be able to skyrocket your efficiency and create manga faster than ever before. With all that said, let's get started. So one of the hardest things to do when you're drawing manga or comics in general is drawing the backgrounds. They look really intensive, they look like they take a lot of time, and sometimes they just look too good to be true. So here, I'm going to teach you something that will help you get that done just a little bit faster and maybe look better than they did before. The first thing you want to do is pick your photo. Now, you can go and take your own photos, that's usually my preferred option. But if you don't have any, you can check out websites like Unsplash, look for the free license images, and choose some of those. I prefer images that have very monotone lighting. I don't know the exact word to use for that, but something that doesn't have a lot of stark, contrasty lighting. So you can see here this image starts very flat. Now before you bring this image into Clip Studio, what you should do is lower the image quality. If the image quality is too high, any screen tones that you put on it later on in this process aren't going to look very good. So lower that image quality, that resolution. As soon as that's in Clip Studio Paint, what you're going to do is you're going to gray out that image. Select this option right here and it's going to be gray. Then you're going to duplicate the image. On the top image, press Ctrl I as it's selected and you're going to invert the colors on it. Now take that top image, put a Gaussian blur on it as I'm showing you here, and try to keep that number around 10 or lower. Now take that top image and set it to Color Dodge. Now what you're going to do is right click on that layer tab and you're going to select Merge Visible Layers to New Layer. This is going to create a new layer merging the two layers that you already have. Now take that new layer, put it on top if it isn't already, and then duplicate it. Now here's what you're going to do with those two layers. You're going to turn the bottom one to Lighten, and you're going to turn the top one to Linear Burn. And before we do anything else, take that Lighten option and set it to 40 opacity to 50 opacity, or a little bit higher if you want some more darkness. And now, between the top two layers and the bottom two layers, you're going to add a new layer, and then you're going to add screen tones to that layer as I'm showing you here. Now after that process is done, you can basically work with it as you want. You can add some more screen tones, you can take away screen tones. What I like to do is go to all the brightest parts of the image, like the sky for example, and erase because I want those to be really, really bright, show some light in that area. Next what I'm going to do is any areas that look like they should be darker, I might color in, add some darker screen tones. What I'm trying to do is contrast up the image so it looks more like a real manga panel because with those manga backgrounds, they tend to be printed in a monochrome fashion. And with that monochrome, we want dark blacks and really bright whites. So if we do that, we get more of a realistic drawing rather than something that was a picture which has a lot of in-between on that grayscale. There's no rush on this process. You've already covered a lot by just not coloring in or drawing the background, I mean. By doing this, you're saving a ton of time. Your manga backgrounds are going to look fantastic. Feel free to give this a try. Let me know what you think. And now we're finished this. As you can see, this manga background looks really nice right now. We've got some nice lighting. We've added in a bit of lighting on those trees to make it look like the sun is shining through. We could add some more shadows in, but I really just want to show off the lighting right now. This is the final result. Sometimes when we're drawing, we tend to zoom in a lot. And a lot of the time, what that causes is problems with our overall drawing. Things look out of frame. Things look like they're not in the right place. And so a way to fix that is to have a full view of your canvas. Another problem that we tend to have is that things look, can look lopsided. And so we're also going to fix that with this tip. What you're going to do is create a new flipped copy of your canvas that updates in real time. It's going to fix all of these problems. Now, go to Window, then Canvas, then New Window. This will create a new duplicate window of the one you're already working in. Now take that duplicate, detach it from the workspace, and now you're going to have a separate window. Move that to wherever you want it, frame it how you like, and try not to cover too much of your working canvas, the bigger one that you're going to be actually drawing on. Now as you can see, as I draw on this canvas, the other one is updating automatically. It updates at the exact time that I finish drawing when I take my pen off the tablet, and I see what my drawing is in full view even if I zoom in. Now what I'm going to do is flip it so I can see the reverse and get rid of that lopsidedness that can come with things like drawing faces and etc. So select your detached canvas, go to View, Rotate slash Flip, and then Flip Horizontal. Press on that and then you'll now see that your canvas, your second canvas that you're not drawing on, is flipped. And as you draw, it automatically draws the flipped version. So now you can freely draw, seeing your updates in real time, even if you turn on things like rulers, those will show up. It makes it a lot easier to deal with zooming, drawing things in frame, things like that. Now screen tones are great and people use them quite a lot when they're drawing manga. 
The problem is, it can be really hard to use things like the wand tool and the lasso tool to draw things in when you have gaps in your drawing and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a brush that uses screen tones rather than ink. First, what you're going to do is choose your brush. I like to use the G Pen. It's solid. It works really well. But you can also use layered versions in order to get darker screen tones in certain areas and brighter screen tones in other areas. So darker grays, lighter grays. It can help, but I think this is better for pure traditional manga screen. Now what you're going to do is set your color to gray. This isn't actually going to draw gray when you use the screen tones. It's actually just going to make it so that you can see the dots further apart. If you have a really large canvas, you're going to want to go lighter. If you have a really small canvas, you might want to go darker. It depends. You'll have to experiment a bit, but changing that color is what changes how well the screen tones can be seen in a lot of cases. Now what you're going to do is while selecting the layer that you're going to draw on, you're going to press the screen tone button. And all you have to do now is start drawing. Now this is only going to work on the layer that you're using at the current moment. If you go to another layer, it's going to go back to working as a G pen, but that's okay. Using this layer, you can just copy it again and again, use it for different layerings. It works really well. Trust me. Have a great time with it. Experiment with it. See what you can do. Now we all know that perspective can be really, really challenging. There's a lot of rules to it, a lot of math if you get detailed with it, and sometimes we just don't want to do that, especially on a drawing program where we don't have access to a ruler. In this case though, we do have a ruler for this. You may have seen it before, it's called the perspective ruler. Now the perspective ruler can be really complex, it can be really intimidating, so I'm going to go through a quick tutorial on how to use it. And once you know how to use it, creating backgrounds will be much, much easier. First we're going to start with the setup. Now what you want to go to is layer ruler slash frame, and then perspective ruler. Now you're going to choose the type of perspective that you want. There's one point, two point, and three point in this option menu. In this case, I'm going to choose three point. I think it's the most complex and it's easy to show a demonstration with it. Now that you have your ruler layer turned on, you can either draw on the ruler layer or you can create a new layer, which would be preferable in a lot of cases. So you don't destroy your layers. If you want to turn off this ruler, you can press shift plus left click on that ruler icon as I'm doing right now. As you can see with the ruler turned on, as we draw, lines go towards these vanishing points on the right, left, and top. These would be used to draw usually backgrounds, large buildings, things like that. Something that takes a lot of perspective rules and would be really challenging if you did it by freehand. Now this is very confusing. There's a lot of icons here, so let's go through every single one so we can get a good idea of what we're looking at. Start by getting onto the object tool up here. And this will allow you to click on these ruler lines and see all of the icons. These circles with pluses on the left, right, and top are the vanishing points. In this case, I have three. If you picked one, you'll have one of these. If you picked two, you'll have two of these. This diamond shape toggles whether the vanishing point line is on or off. So you'll see if I click it here and I try to draw, it's not going to work. The open circle icon lets me move around single lines at a time. This can be really helpful when I want to line up these lines with maybe a reference image or something like that. It helps me set the vanishing point where I want it to. The icons above and below this open circle just help me move the vanishing point. Works the same way as grabbing that plus circle on the end and moving it. This arrow icon moves all of the rulers at once. The icon to the top left of that will just move the arrow icon as you select it. The icon on the bottom right of the arrow icon will toggle all of the rulers, same as that diamond shape button. In this case though, as you can see, all of them turn green, so they're all going to be toggled. Changing the center circle and moving it around changes the horizon line or the eye level. The icons to the left and right of that will change the horizon angle. Now here's a few other cool things you can do with the perspective ruler. One is that you can turn on a grid, and there's three different types of grids based on which ones you want to have. Here, as you can see, I've set it to the flat grid, the one on the ground. And as I use it, you can see that my lines snap to that grid. This is really useful for great consistency, and I love to use this a lot when I'm drawing my background. Another cool thing you can do with the perspective ruler is use the shape tool. As you draw shapes, and especially with the grid on, you can have them snap into that perspective. There you go, you are now a master of the perspective ruler. It can be really, really hard to tell if your manga is going to look good once it's cut out. See, when we're using these special panels, we get a little cutoff, a little margin that tells us where it's going to be cut once it's printed. And it's hard to really remember which one is which. So a quick way to just check that you're putting your panels in the right place is to use a 3D rendered book preview. And it shows you the binding, it shows you where your panels are going to be, and it shows you what it will look like folded into a book. And you can do this all within Clip Studio Paint, so let's get started. Now, there's really not a lot to do here. Let's say you already have your manga ready to go. What you're going to do is you're going to go to File, Export Multiple Pages, and then go to 3D Preview of Binding. Now this is going to take a second to load up, but once it does, you'll get to see a full 3D render of your manga, flip through it, zoom in, move it around so you can really get a good idea of what this is going to look like as a finished product. 
And that's really all there is to it. It's a great way of checking. It's a great way of looking at your manga in real time to see what it's going to look like in the future. So have fun with that. There you have it. Five tips and tricks in Clip Studio Paint to make your manga look better than ever in way less time. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and comment any more tips you might know down below. This has been Spencer from Start Manga, and I'll see you later.